But unfortunately, Heather McDonald, I fear your book's going to get dog ears over time because this country is uh, on the brink, and I blame in part the President of the United States and the rhetoric and the propaganda, the attack on the police departments in this country. And I just want to say this first to my audience. This weekend, if you see a police officer, I want you to thank the police officer. That's what the Levinites are going to do. I want you to thank the police officer. Heather McDonald, first of all, before we get into the details here, none of this surprises you what's going on right now, does it? No, it doesn't, because the assassination of these cops is just an, an accentuated and more violent version of what officers have been living every day in the streets for the last two years, thanks to the calumnies spread by the Black Lives Matter movement and amplified by President Obama. As a police officer in Chicago told me several weeks ago when I was out there, he's never seen such hatred in his 20 years of policing. Another homicide detective in Chicago told me the job is basically undoable. And that's all because of falsehoods that the police are in minority communities out of racism rather than to save lives. And you're absolutely right, Mark. Unless we have a, a very strong about face, uh, this is going to continue. I just want people to know you cannot have liberty. You cannot have a republic with law, without law and order. This is anarchy. And well, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no, I'm sorry. I, I interrupted you. You're absolutely right. We are, we are threatening the very basis of civilization. People killing cops is as about as terrifying to everybody an act of political terrorism that you can engage in. Uh, and it's, the thing is, this is not the first time this has happened. We've already seen the spawn of the Black Lives Matter calumnies and hatred and lies with the assassination in December 2014 of two New York Police Department officers, Wenjin Liu and Rafael Ramos. Uh, and, and it put maybe a 15-minute crimp on the agitation against the cops, and then it just it became even more virulent and hate-filled. President of the United States in Poland, one in the morning, he feels compelled to comment on two cases involving police officers in Louisiana, one in Louisiana, one in Minnesota. He doesn't know any of the facts. You know, he argues for due process. He argues for, uh, for tolerance. He, ar he argues for reflection when it comes to terrorists. And literally. And yet, when it comes to police, can we at least get the facts before we draw conclusions? Maybe we think we know everything, but we may not. Well, the worst part of that speech, Mark, uh, was not even his jumping to conclusions that racism was behind these two shootings in Baton Rouge and, and, and Minnesota. It was a litany of lies against the cops claiming that they are disproportionately focusing on minorities out of racial bias as opposed to simply going after criminals. They are focusing on where people are being victimized and yet Obama, I don't know if it was the ACLU that was feeding him his, his lies. Um, Heather, I don't mean to interrupt you. We're going to take a break. I want to bring you right back, and we're going to get right into that, the points that you're raising right now. We're going to hear some of what Obama says and have you reply to it. Heather, let me ask you a question. Why is it that the NRA is said to be responsible for every gun killing, and yet the president, his party, Black Lives Matter, and they're not responsible for anything? Well, they want to continue a racialized discourse because it keeps their constituents happy and uh, they refuse to acknowledge that rhetoric and lies matter. But what we're seeing now, frankly, is the loss of black lives because officers are backing off of proactive policing in inner city communities but now we've seen the loss of, of police lives as well. So this discourse that Obama is perpetrating is responsible for far more killings than the sale of guns. You know, the sale of guns does not result in killings. What results in killings is criminal mindset, children that are raised without fathers, that have no sense of self-control, uh, and, that, and that respond to dissing by going out and engaging in drive-by shootings. 
I want uh, you and me and my audience to listen to Obama last night. Now, this is before Dallas, before Dallas. Cut one, go. And I just want to give people a few statistics uh, to try to put in context why emotions are so raw around these issues. According to various studies, not just one, but a wide range of studies that have been carried out over a number of years, African Americans are 30 percent more likely than whites to be pulled over. After being pulled over, African Americans and Hispanics are three times more likely to be searched. Last year, African Americans were shot by police at more than twice the rate of whites. Let, let's stop there for now. What do you make of all these comments? Obama says he wants to put the anger in context. Why doesn't he put police behavior in context? He leaves out the incidence of crime. You cannot understand policing today, Mark, without understanding crime, because policing is data-driven. It doesn't care about race. It cares about where people are being victimized. He talks about... Uh, let, me, let me just stop. The cops go where the crimes occur, correct? Correct. Isn't that what you're saying? They have to go to the communities in the areas where there's a crime problem. They're not going on picnics. They're not going on the Ferris wheel. They have to be populated where the populations are, where there's the highest levels of crime. What Obama could have done a, a service in is giving the country, breaking the taboo around black crime. Blacks commit homicide at eight times the rate of whites and Hispanics combined. If you take Hispanics out of that equation, blacks are committing homicide at about 11 or 12 times the rate of whites. And may I stop you there? And they're killing blacks for the most part, aren't they? Blacks die by homicide at six times the rate of whites and Hispanics combined. If you look at at gun homicides committed by teens, black males between the ages of 14 and 17, the rate of gun homicide among black teens males is, is 10 times higher than whites and Hispanics combined. Does that have any bearing on whether African and Hispanic marriages are three times more likely to be searched after a stop? Of course it does, because there's more arrest warrants out there. He complains that African Americans are arrested at twice the rate of whites. What does he expect, given those crime rates? He refuses to give officers the courtesy of, of respecting their professionalism and understanding, again, that they are going in order to save black lives that have been victimized by these mindless drive-by shootings uh, in, in about 72 hours in Chicago this weekend. You had about five children who were shot. Uh, a, a boy over over Father's Day, a three-year-old was shot, is now going to be paralyzed for life. That's why officers in Chicago are in the south side and west side. It's not out of racism, but Obama seems to think that they are simply irrationally pulling people over and searching them. He is so ideologically blinded, isn't he, that he simply cannot comprehend that there's actually reasons for these statistics. Reasons well, beyond race. That's right. And, and it's not just statistics. It's also the calls of good people in the community for police protection. The people who say, I love the cops. Please, Jesus, send more cops. The elderly who say, it's a good day if I see cops. They are my friends. He cannot hear those people. The ACLU does not hear them. Uh, Eric Holder did not hear them. And apparently, Hillary Clinton is also not hearing them because a few hours ago on Wolf Blitzer, she was calling for training on implicit bias for every police department in the country. This is an insult. She wants national guidelines on use of force. The federal government knows nothing about policing. She wants white people to put themselves in the shoes of African-American parents who need to give their kids the talk. How about she put their shoes in the parents of people who are killed by drive-by shootings. That is the problem today. Police are the solution, not the problem. It's just, it's, it's so frustrating and aggravating. Here, listen to a little bit more of Obama, again, before the slaughter of the police officers in Dallas. Go ahead. Are arrested at twice the rate of whites. 
African American defendants are 75 percent more likely to be charged with offenses carrying mandatory minimums. They receive sentences that are almost 10 percent longer than comparable whites arrested for the same crime. So that if you add it all up, the African American and Hispanic population who make up only 30 percent of the general population make up more than half of the incarcerated population. Well, couldn't it be? I hate to say this, that those specific individuals, regardless of their race, are actually committing crimes? I mean, I mean, th- isn't this, pardon my language, ass backwards? We're looking at the statistics of who's in prison, who's, who's being stopped and so forth. Well, what have they done? Mark, criminologists are a pretty left-wing bunch, and they have spent two decades trying to prove this thesis that the overrepresentation of blacks and Hispanics in prison is due to criminal justice racism, phantom racism, whether it's on part of the police or prosecutors or judges or juries. And the honest ones, very left-wing ones like Michael Tonry, have been forced to conclude that the over-representation of blacks in prison is due to their rates of violent offending. And it's also not due to the drug war. That's another myth that Obama loves to go spreading around. You can take every drug prisoner out of the prison population and the percentage of blacks in prison today drops from 37.7 percent down to 37.5 percent in other words it doesn't budge one bit prison today remains a lifetime achievement for persistence in criminal offending you have to work very hard to get yourself sentenced to prison most people are given, most convicted criminals are given community sentences or jail time. The people in prison today are violent felons. It is violent felony that drives the prison population. And unfortunately, again, you have blacks in the 75 largest counties or 15% of the population. They commit nearly two-thirds of all violent crime. That's robberies, shootings, aggravated assaults, and homicides. And notice he doesn't pull together a group of so-called experts at the White House to discuss these problems in a, in a real way, in a rational way. Let me ask you something. For the police to be so successful in incarcerating all these people because the police are bigots, that means the judges are in on it, the juries are in on it, the prosecutors are in on it, a defense counsel's in on it, means everybody's in on it, doesn't it? <laughs> That's absolutely right. It's just it's amazing fantasy. It requires a conspiracy of, of extraordinary complexity and, and perfection to be able to do this. But they actually believe that, that this remains, I mean, this is what gets pumped out of our universities on a daily basis, that, that there is something uh, just endemic about racism in, in the American public even though there isn't a single elite institution today that is not tying itself into knots to try to either hire or admit as many black people as possible, Uh, and yet we still are supposed to believe that there is a conspiracy against blacks in this country. It's just the opposite. Every hiring search in a university or in a corporation is a desperate search for so-called diversity, which is defined in the most barbaric and and simplistic way possible according to gonads and melanin that's not real diversity but that's how the elites think of it uh... so yes it, it's it's a it's a very strange conceit once you think about it in detail as you rightly do well, let's talk about this gonad issue for for a second so again following their ill logic the fact that most prisoners are males must mean that males are being discriminated against well, you know, nobody gives a damn about males these days, so that, that's the one issue nobody talks about. You're absolutely right. They're, nobody's worried about disproportion of males in prison, which is vast. It's far, far greater than the disproportion of blacks in prison. But, but you're not going to get a feminist complaining about that because basically the feminist industrial complex today is trying to disappear males. They've done a good job of, of, of saying they are not necessary in families, that strong women can do it all and of course there's many single mothers that are working heroically to raise law-abiding boys but the uh, odds are against them but it's impossible today to say that children need their mothers and their fathers well you've done a really a magnificent job of pulling this information together you're very courageous on this and on immigration and other issues too 
As you know, I'm a huge fan. Just keep it up. This is a crucially important book, The War on Cops. I've got it right up there on my social site. You can get it on Amazon, any bookstore over this weekend. And ladies and gentlemen, it's time to arm ourselves with this information so we can fight back and explain, no, no, that's not correct. All right, Heather, we appreciate it very, very much. Oh, Mark, I'm so honored to be on your show again. Thank you so much. You too. Take care of yourself. Yeah, she's excellent. Absolutely superb.